Blessed day, beloved people of God. Welcome to the Lord reigns. Grace, peace, love, prosperity, victory, success, and divine health to everyone made available by God the Great King, who is the creator, owner, and possessor of all heaven and earth, everyone and everything in them. The Eternal Savior. God is the Eternal One. He has existed before time began, long before creation, and He endures forever. He is the timeless Lord an everlasting God. He is the eternal Savior and King. Jesus is the Savior of the world. His intercession and advocacy for us in heaven is eternal. God is a seity, which means of oneself. He is independent and self-existent. He doesn't depend on anyone or anything for his existence. He is the one in whom all others and everything find their source, existence, and continuance. He is the ever-present power that sustains all life. He said, For I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is none like me. He has no need. He is complete in and of himself, and always has been. He is eternal. His name, I am, speaks of his eternality and immutability. He does not have a beginning, nor will he ever have an end. He is unchangeable, always the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he will be unchangeable forever. God says, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. Nothing and no one can thwart his purpose. Nothing and no one can or will stop him from keeping his promises. What he said he will do, he will do. Jesus Christ is not a created being. He is God in human form. He being equal with God claims the name I am as well. God declared to the Israelites that he is the first and the last. And Jesus said the same thing about himself. God is infinite in space and time, meaning he is everywhere at once and exists in every time zone simultaneously. His attributes are also infinite, meaning his love, mercy, truth, and holiness are eternal. And because of that, we can depend on him to grant us eternal salvation as he is the eternal Savior. All those the Father gives him will come to Christ and nothing can stop them. He will never cast them away. Our only hope of eternal salvation is the eternal priesthood of Jesus Christ. As our faithful high priest, he will intercede for us forever. He 
is our king of righteousness. He is our king of peace. He is the king of kings and he will never need to be replaced. We have the new, superior, and final high priest. His sacrifice of himself and his eternal intercession guarantees eternal salvation for all God's people. Eternal life is a promise from the eternal Savior. In John 3.16, he displayed the ultimate act of his love and desire to be reunited with us. Though he had no sin, he became sin for us so that we would become the righteousness of God. It was the eternal Savior's grace that saved us through faith. We didn't do anything to achieve it. It is a gift from him. It wasn't by any works of ours, so no one can boast. If we confess our wrongdoing, he is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. If we declare with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that the eternal Savior raised him from the dead, we will be saved. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary, his understanding is unsearchable. For in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Yes, in him the word was life, and the life was the light of men. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Jesus Christ, who is the same yesterday and today and forever. For it is witnessed of him, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek, who is without father or mother or genealogy, having neither beginning of days nor end of life, but resembling the Son of God, he continues a priest forever. And it was not without the taking of an oath that Christ was made priest. For those who formerly became priests received their office without its being confirmed by the taking of an oath by God. But this one was designated and addressed and saluted with an oath. The Lord has sworn and will not regret it or change his mind. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. In keeping with the oath's greater strength and force, Jesus has become the guarantee of a better, stronger agreement, a more excellent and more advantageous covenant. Again, the former successive line of priests was made up of many because they were each prevented by death from continuing perpetually in office. But he holds his priesthood unchangeably because he lives on forever. Therefore, he is able also to save to the utmost, completely, perfectly, finally, and for all time and eternity, those who come to God through him. Since he is always living to make petition to God and intercede with him and intervene for them. Here is the high priest perfectly adapted to our needs as was fitting, holy, 
blameless, unstained by sin, set apart from sinners and exalted higher than the heavens. He has no day by day necessity as do each of these other high priests to offer sacrifice first of all for his own personal sins and then for those of the people because he met all the requirements once for all when he brought himself as a sacrifice which he offered up. For the law sets up men in their weakness as high priests. But the word of God's oath, which was spoken later after the institution of the law, chooses and appoints as priest one whose appointment is complete and permanent, a son who has been made perfect forever. For by a single offering, he has forever completely cleansed and perfected those who are sanctified, consecrated, and made holy. Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And this is the testimony that God has given us his promise of eternal life. And this life is in his son. Yes, which at his appointed season, he has brought to light through the preaching entrusted to us by the command of God, our savior, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness, the hope of eternal life, which God who does not lie promised before the beginning of time. And this is eternal life, to know, to perceive, recognize, become acquainted with, have and understand you, the only true and real God, and likewise to know him, Jesus, as the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, whom you have sent. For God so greatly loved and dearly prized the world that he even gave up his only begotten son so that whoever believes in him shall not perish or come into destruction nor be lost, but have eternal everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world in order to judge, reject, condemn, or pass sentence on the world but that the world might find salvation being preserved from destruction and be made safe and sound through him. For it is the thief who comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. But he came that we may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full till it overflows. Most assuredly, I say to you, he who hears his word and believes in him who sent Jesus has eternal life. And he does not come into judgment, but he has already passed over out of death into life, having taken of the tree of life to eat and live forever. That now having been set free from sin and having become servants of God, we have our fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. For by grace we have been saved through faith. It is the gift of God. And the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. For God says, he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. For he said, behold, I will gather them out of all countries. I will bring them back to this place, and I will cause them to dwell safely. They shall be my people, and I will be their God. Then I will give them one heart and one way that they may reverence me forever for the good of them and their children after them. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them that I will not turn away from doing them good, but I will put my reverence in their hearts so that they will not depart from me. 
Yes, I will rejoice over them to do them good. And I will assuredly plant them in this land with all my heart and with all my soul. I will never leave nor forsake them. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouth of your offspring or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord, from this time forth and forevermore. For we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves him, who loves the Father, also loves him who is begotten of him. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of the grass. The grass withers and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word which by the gospel was preached to us. For Jesus entered once for all into the holy places, not by means of the blood of goats and calves, but by means of his own blood, thus securing an eternal redemption. Whereof the word says, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. The sun shall not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them and they will be his people and God himself will be with them as their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away. We perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it so that people reverently fear him, revere and worship him, knowing that he is. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. And John wrote to us who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on the name of the Son of God so that we may know with settled and absolute knowledge that we already have life, yes, eternal life. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding so that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. For he says, I give them eternal life and they will never perish. And no one will snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. For he said, all that the Father gives me will come to me, and whoever comes to me, I will never cast out. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I should lose nothing of all that he has given me, but raise it up on the last day. For this is the will of my Father, that everyone who looks on the Son and believes in him should have eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day.
Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in the heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. In him, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and all understanding. He made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in Christ, to be put into effect when the times reach their fulfillment, to bring unity to all things in heaven and on earth under Christ. In him we were also chosen, having been predestined according to the plan of him who works out everything in conformity with the purpose of his will, in order that we who put our hope in Christ might be for the praise of his glory. And we also were included in Christ when we heard the message of truth, the gospel of our salvation. When we believed, we were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Yes, he has put his seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. Praise be to the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, nor fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for us who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed now in the last time. He will sustain us to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for listening. We trust you were encouraged, strengthened, and filled with hope. We love you, and until next time, remember, the Lord reigns with love for all.